Hello, and welcome to Apex Instant Tips, episode 86, brought to you every Friday at 12.05 Eastern Time. I'm Anton. We have with us today a special guest, Hayden. Welcome, Hayden. Uh, excited to be here, Anton. Um, and uh, particularly because, as we teased on Twitter, we have um, a groundbreaking insight into how to solve a particular bug or a particular yeah. issue. Yeah, you know, it's not often that... I Google something and get nothing, zero. And yet this week's tip, the string that I Googled in support of it, I got no results at all. Um, so in my mind, that makes this a world premiere. And nor is it so esoteric that I, I think everyone will get some value from this. So without further ado, perhaps we should start sharing screens. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, well I'll, I'll put you on here. Um, what do you have for us? Yeah, so, so here's the context. Um, all Apex users, and let me start my timer here, um, will be familiar with this um, uh, familiar and stressful screen of cataclysmic failure. Uh, your end user might be presented with contact your application administrator, details about this incident are available via debug ID and then a debug ID. So it's um, uh, it's confusing um, it, and also it's not funny. super it's funny because, for most people. Yeah, it's funny because my screen when I get when I run my application, it has a similar error. It says contact Michelle at mscamini at insum.ca. Ask her to check into debug IG. Uh, I'm sure yeah, she'll get and, right on it. And I don't know why that isn't the default because all um, uh, application cataclysmic failures should be um, tasked. Uh, Mishka should be the one to solve them. So we all want these error messages to default to contact Mishka. Mishka, uh, yes. So, uh, but let's say I don't have Mishka for the second, uh, for the moment. Um, uh, how can I look into this debug ID? Well, if you want to look into it yourself, the, the thing to do is to go head right over to the application builder. You'd have to do this in your production environment if, um, or, or have some other way, but um, monitor activity. And at the bottom left, you'll see uh, application debug. So it's a little bit funny. Uh, application application errors. errors. Yeah. Um, and but then uh, here is my debug ID. So yeah, I, I, I could take the trouble to solve this. Um, I don't want to. I want. I want to. I, I want to direct my users to contact Michelle Scamini. Um, yeah. So how? Uh, what are my options for editing this um, error message? So the the funny thing is, I don't think that this is really well documented anywhere in the world. The first thing you have to do is figure out where is this app, where is this message coming from, and the answer to that is it's coming from. Um, a, a application translations and Apex has a an application inside the Apex workspace application four four one one that has all of those translations. So yours starts your message text starts with contact your application admin. So I did a quick query on it and I found there are two Apex contact admin Apex contact admin debug. It's the second one. So and uh, to repeat to even access this information you need a privileged user to query the internal um, right. translation, translation. At a message. minimum, you need the admin role. Um, you could theoretically change this. Like you could actually update that message, but that would update that for everything in the, in the entire instance. There is a better way. You can Absolutely, override it. You can override it. Yeah, so uh, you, uh, you need an admin role to find out the name of the text message, uh, translatable message value. But once you have it, you no longer need admin privileges. You, you can do it as a default developer in a workspace. Right, so, so hey, let's uh, switch back to you. And so how do you do that? So I will navigate to my application and I'm going to add a text message uh, that uh, has the same value that you just demonstrated. So apex.contactadmin.debug and um, just uh, quick. yeah, uh, contact Mishka. And put the percent zero in there so we get the the, the ID. Yeah. And now um, when I run the same page, I get contact Mishka. Excellent. Um, and you of course don't get the other junk if you're not logged in, but you'll get the you'll That's get contact fine. Mishka. So um, yeah. So that's, that's really it. Now, I'm going to point out a couple of things with this. I'm going to jump back to my screen. Um, there is some documentation on this. Um, the, the documentation, I feel, is highly incomplete in that 
it talks about doing this in other languages. It doesn't even mention that you can override your own language. Um, so there's, there's documentation and it is a supported thing, but it's not, the documentation is not really accurate. The other thing is the documentation has literally a hundred, hundreds probably of things that you can change. And yet, despite having over a hundred things you can change, it doesn't have all of them. Um, yep. Right. So the, the one that we're talking about right now, the one that you just demonstrated is not in this list. And yet it's right here. It's easily accessible through this. If you have access, I will. Publish. What is a what is another use case um, for uh, overwriting a uh, an internal workspace? Um, sure. Translatable message. So right here, for example, this says actions, right? If I want this to say something other than actions, I've seen all kinds of places on the internet where they write some JavaScript and so forth. That's not the way to do it. Just come to your text messages, use Apex IG actions. I'm gonna take the XXX off because I just put that on there. Now, when I redo this, when I refresh this page, it's gonna to change to click here. Um, there it is, click here. I love that. I, I think this is so powerful. And, and we are at time. Um, oh, we're at, at time. At, so, at, this is so powerful. I, I will definitely make use of this tip. Great. Um, I will publish a, um, a link to an application that has all of the text messages that you can change and, and how, where they are. Um, but until then, this is fairly good. And if you have access to SQL developer or, or access to the, any Apex workspace, you can find this, any internal workspace. Um, there you have it. There's a link to the documentation in the comments. Um, there we go. Hayden, uh, I did not prep anything at all for after this. Um, but if anyone has questions, I'm happy to take them. Do you have a couple minutes if there a question shows up? Yeah. Um, I, I won't be surprised if um, different people have come up with different solutions to solve the same issue. And so certainly um, uh, bring them up. All right. Yeah, I'd love to, love to hear what um, people have. Um, well, uh, I am heading out tomorrow to go indoor skydiving at my mom's 80th birthday party. So I want to shout out happy birthday to my mom for turning 80. And, um, and everybody hope that uh, my indoor skydiving activities uh, at least um, match those of my mom. Uh, I would love to see some photos. Uh, that, that sounds like a... An apt 80th birthday. Yeah, well, maybe next week I can share some photos of my mom indoor skydiving. So uh, I'll let you know. Um, well, I don't see any questions. So everybody gets out of here pretty early today. If uh, you liked the video, like the video, uh, right? Do all those things and tell your mom happy birthday on her birthday. <laughs> yeah. Short and sweet. That's how I like it. Uh, see everybody next Friday. Oh, did I share the, the demo code um, from your show with Steven? I gave it to Steven. I believe he was going to. I'm putting it in. Uh, I'm going to put it on live SQL. Uh, I have not put it on live SQL yet, but that is um, high on my list of things to get done. Thank you for your question. And thanks for sh joining both shows. Um, all right. Now we'll really let people get out of here. Bye-bye. Take care.